gestation sow feeding. That's the one that I know Chad Future is here in, in a, we always laugh because I, that's the one that I knocked on the table when I'm discussing about that one. Uh, <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. Um, so I think most of you know more feed, well, it's more cost, right? But more fat sows at farrowing, more stillborns, uh, lower lactation feed intake. That, that is very, very black and white. That's gonna happen. And then same birth weight, a lot of studies, especially the most recent studies, not a lot of responses there, several studies. We're talking over 50,000 baby pigs being weighed at birth. And uh, so then the interesting part here, we get polemics like, oh, most of these studies are only one cycle. Um, and uh, that's true, most of the studies are only one cycle, even though there's a few that looked at two, two cycles. But then uh, Dr. Andre Malma there from Dr. Bortoloso's lab, he, we did a study together, a uh, uh, thousand guilds, they fed, um, I use a pound here on a corn soy diet, four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, seven pounds, you divide that by 2.2 .2 or roughly two to get the kg there. But um, basically, a, very clear, not a lot of response to the birth weight, lower feed intake, and then, but he followed over four uh, cycles. And as you would expect, the more heavy the sows are, the lower, the less they eat in lactation, they more, the more weight they, they lose. And, uh, and then over time, uh, what happens is actually they, they, uh, they're not retained in the herd as much. Um, and it's interesting because he just applied the treatment in the first cycle. If he had applied in all the cycles, would be much worse, the situation. But even then, he was able to pick up uh, statistical differences there. One more comment here. Uh, well, two comments before, Jamil, getting your thoughts there. Uh, one is, there's a study from 1988 where this, I don't think we'd be able to do this study today, but what they did, they fast, fasted the sows for two weeks prior to farrowing. Uh, and then you can guess what happened. Nothing, right? Because the sow in late gestation, she prioritized the litter or the fetus. It's just like the lactating sow prioritized the litter, losing body condition and everything. Uh, so that's super, for me, that when I start putting all these pieces together, that was a big one. And then 2014, Peter Thiel from Denmark, uh, I read something that I didn't know, which is in late gestation, uh, again, she prioritized the fetuses, right? We always think, oh, reproduction is a luxury. So if she's, you know, she's not happy, uh, she's going to abort or lose bo a birth weight of the pigs. That's not quite true in late gestation. It's true in early gestation from a return standpoint, if she's thin, right? So that's that's the, the point there. Uh, I think for those that feel the, the poll there, at least our view is, Honestly, you don't even have to bump feed any uh, the guilts or, uh, or the sows. The only point is look at the sow. If she's thin and you can see the backbones, she needs feed. It's that simple. If she's fat, she needs less feed. I don't, I don't care what the nutrition is saying. I see, uh, especially around the globe, oh, here's the growth. Uh, here's the fetal growth. Oh, she needs more feed. No, she doesn't need more feed. She's fat. Very simple. She already has one problem. We don't want to create another one. Jamil. Yeah, yeah uh, I like this topic because maybe one of the last gap that we just feel is the part of retention rate. Uh, every time that you was in a conference talking about bump feeding, the, the first question was, and what about retention rate? And uh, that work, that study that you just said, uh, uh, fill this gap. Uh, uh, and now I, I guess there's a, a lot of room for study, studies around the transition diet close to the farrowing time. And then maybe we are, uh, 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 understanding a little bit better how to give a little bit of more, uh, not birth weight, yeah, birth weight, but some, we are having some nice results in, in the last studies about transition diet, so more close in, in five days to the fairing date, so, uh, but, but bump feeding is something that at least with the last uh, studies, it's pretty clear that we are just not wasting, but uh, uh, increasing the size of the cell, basically. Yeah. And uh, a few comments there, Jamil, is that I know a few in the audience have done studies. I know Mark Nauer has done and, and a few others have done studies on the last 10 days, for example, or seven days, right? Which is pretty much a transition. That's different, right? 
when we're talking here late gestation, I'm mostly talking the last th trimester there or 22 days from day 90 on, right? That's a, that's a long time. Um, so that, I think that's, that covers most of it, uh, Jamil. Uh, yeah. So yeah, just look at the sow and that, that's, that's it. Very, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to do uh, objectively. I, re uh, I like the caliper a lot. Uh, but even if you have someone that's good and the visual and consistent, but the problem with the visual is that you have consultants coming in, you have different South farm managers and everyone has their own opinion and exactly. that's pretty tough.